Good morning. It's Thursday. Yesterday we saw that Paul was leaving and he said, I will return to you again if God wills. And then he set sail from Ephesus. Today we pick it up in verse 22. When he had landed at Caesarea, he went up and greeted the church and went down to Antioch. And having spent some time there, he left and passed successively through the Galatian region and Phrygia, strengthening all the disciples. So this was now Paul's third missionary journey. He basically went back over his tracks, uh, went back, greeted the church uh, at Caesarea and then went down to Antioch. And having spent some time in Antioch, he then passed through uh, Galatian region and Phrygia. And what was he doing? He was visiting the congregations, uh, the churches that he had established, and he was strengthening all the disciples. Paul was forever looking at building the kingdom of God. He was always strengthening the disciples. He was not only bringing new people to the faith, but he was making sure that those that are in the faith were growing in the faith. And he was dealing with problems and issues that arose within the churches, as we see in his letters, which we thankfully now have in the New Testament. A lot of them were addressing certain issues and certain congregations and different things that came up. Paul was forever teaching, he was molding, he was shaping, he was strengthening. And that's what we need to be doing. We live in a world that is so anti-God, in a world that is so against his word and his principles, that we can so easily get corrupted. And so that's why I come to you every morning with these messages, in the hope that these simple messages, these few minutes that we spend together in a morning, sets you on the right path for the day. It's my hope that these messages I bring you some hope, some strength, some clarity, and are teaching you to find the answers for the things that you need in life in the Word of God. As I said to you the other day, God speaks to us all the time, uh, but the question is, are we listening? God speaks to us every time we read His Word, and He has given us His Word to shape us, to mould us, to correct us where we need to be corrected, to encourage us, to comfort us, to strengthen us, to feed us. And so it's very important that we daily feast upon His Word and that we set our compass right at the beginning of the day and that sort of sets the tone for the rest of the day. If we begin the day with thanksgiving, if we begin the day walking with the Lord, then we're on a good path. So I hope that these messages are encouraging to you, that they are helpful to you, and God willing, I'll continue to bring them to you uh, as much as I possibly can. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we bow our heads before you in the precious name of Jesus, your Son and our Lord. We thank you for this new day that you have given to us. We thank you, Lord, that great is your faithfulness. And even when we are unfaithful, you are faithful. And we thank you, Lord, that when we come to you in repentance, you forgive us. So we repent of all of our sins. And we pray, Lord, that you would set us on the right path. Take us today by the hand, lead us and guide us. We surrender all to you. We love you and thank you that you love us. We ask, Lord, that you would pour out your Holy Spirit upon us. I pray for everyone who listens to these messages, that you would just strengthen them with your Spirit. May your light shine in and through them. Lord God, Heavenly Father, have mercy. We pray for our government. We pray for our country. We pray, Lord, that you would give them wisdom and understanding and discernment in these times. There's so much pressure on them from every, every corner. The media is often disrupting and corrupting the truth. Lord, we pray that they would know the truth, that they would be strong, that they would walk in your ways and realize that ultimately they're answerable to you. You are the one who raises up. You are the one who brings down. Heavenly Father, we pray for the church. We pray for her leadership. We pray that you would just cleanse, renew, begin with us. Take out all the false prophets and the false teachers and the liars and give us people who are true and faithful to your word. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we pray for those who are suffering in war-torn areas. We pray for peace. We pray for an end to conflicts. We pray for the sick, the dying, the poor, the needy, the orphan, the widow. We pray, Lord, especially for the lost soul. There's so many all around us. We pray that you would just show us how we can show them that you are the way, the truth, and the life. Heavenly Father, we commit to you our loved ones near and far. We pray for your protection. As we prepare now for Christmas very soon, we pray that in the hustle and the bustle, that we would never lose sight of the reason for the season. And that is that you so loved us, that you gave your only begotten son, 
so that whosoever believes on him should not perish but have everlasting life. Lord God, we now thank you, bless you, praise you, ask that you lead us. And together we pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. So my friends, have a blessed day. God be with you. God willing, I'll see you all again tomorrow.